Hey there everybody, just Marco here with another one for you. I hope you're all well, I'm certainly doing well here. This is gonna be a bit of a short one. I recently uh, had a friend of mine pick up a Sony a6700, sort of on my recommendation. So many of you know I shoot with the a6700 when I'm doing these episodes and I'm out on the street, but my professional work and this talking head stuff when I can put the camera on a tripod is usually with the FX30, which I'm shooting with right now. Both cameras share the same sensor. And the new ZV-E10 Mark II that's going to be coming out or shipping soon also shares the same sensor, so you can expect the same color from that too. The only real difference between the three cameras is you'll find that the uh, in-camera sharpening um, isn't quite as strong in the FX30, and that's for good reason. Professionals like to add sharpening afterwards. Of course, you can change the in-camera sharpening with the FX30 as well as the other two cameras. I tend to talk a little bit too much sometimes, so let's just get to what this video is about. And that's how I take my S-Log3 and make it into what you're seeing right here, okay? Uh, very, very simple process. I was trying to explain that to my friend and then I thought to myself, hey, that might make a good episode. He can watch it and then alleviate any concerns he may have as to how he can get decent color um, and still take advantage of uh, shooting log. Of course, you don't have to. Out of the box colors are pretty great on these cameras. If you want to venture into the world of log uh, footage and a little bit of grading, nothing crazy, this is how you do it in DaVinci Resolve. I'm reinventing myself. I'm me and nobody else Ooh, I can't help but smile So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. No worries if your screen doesn't look like mine. It's the fact I'm using two monitors. I do that to give myself a little bit more real estate and it makes things a little cleaner and more simple for you guys to understand, I think, as well. well I'm going to just bring in that clip that um, I started the video with. So let me just put out that you don't need the studio version of Resolve for this. You can use the free version of Resolve, which uh, I think is actually good for most people. No real reason to pay for it if you don't have to. Right, so you can see that the footage is very flat and that's because I've shot it in S-Log3. The S in front of log just means Sony, depending on the camera that you're shooting with. Maybe you're shooting in log on a Canon, and I guess it would like start with uh, a C then, like C-Log. And I want to convert that to Rec 709. Rec just means recommendation. There's an international standards association that assigns recommendations. Rec 709 is usually like for standard um, HD footage. It's what's most commonly used on platforms like uh, YouTube. UHD footage, although like I'm shooting everything in UHD, I'm still converting to Rec 709. The uh, recommended for uh, UHD or ultra high def is Rec 2020. There's also a Rec 2100 and the Rec 2100 is for HDR footage. There's also different frame rates that uh, follow uh, those recommendations as well. Like if you are going to be uploading at 60 FPS, they recommend Rec 2020. But we're going to be focused on Rec 709. There's a guy named Joel Fumalaro. He's the one who created the LUT I'm going to be using to convert my footage to Rec 709. Uh, there's another very popular one, especially for Sony people, and that's the Leeming LUTs. My friend Mark Bennett uses the Leeming LUTs. But Sony themselves, as well as many other camera manufacturers, have their own LUTs that are free, available for download, for converting your log footage to one of these standards, like Rec 709. So we with your footage selected, go into the color page. So I'm just going to right click on this node, go to add node, serial node. Now a lot of people will start putting adjustments on their initial node. I just like to keep that clean. It's just sort of this weird habit I got myself into. The second node, typically I like to put my sharpening on it. As I mentioned, some cameras like the FX30 don't have a lot of in-camera sharpening and I like to add my sharpening manually. To do that in Resolve, I'll have that selected, that node. I'll go down to here. I'll reduce this radius. And I usually don't reduce it more than 0.46. Now, the more you reduce this, the sharper things get. Um, I don't like to go too crazy with this. And I put the sharpening on its own node. So if I ever want to get rid of it later, I can just delete the entire node. 
And then after that, I usually create a node that's for uh, adjusting the color, pulling up shadows, dropping highlights. You don't have to do it like I do it here. This is sort of just the habit I got into. And then for the last node, I like putting the LUT. And this makes a lot of sense. This is something that I do recommend that you do uh, is add the LUT onto the last node. So I'm, I'm adding a... Um, the node here right click on that i go to lut i'm going to put on my neutral phantom lut and you'll see the image changes right away if you haven't installed a lut that you may have purchased or maybe you grabbed it from sony or from whatever camera manufacturer you can go into the settings cog down here go into color here color management on the left hand side and if you scroll down to the bottom here it says open lut folder and that'll show you where your LUTs are and you can just drag your LUTs into this folder and then they'll appear once you right click this and go to LUT and you'll you'll find it there here I'll maybe I want to deepen some of these blacks a little bit so I'm going to just drop that lift just a little bit just deepen the blacks a little bit uh, maybe bring up my gain just a touch that is looking pretty good so if you want to sort of preview what difference one of these nodes is making you can click on the number that corresponds with the node and that way you can sort of deactivate and reactivate it and watch what it's actually doing just remember to turn that on <laughs> if you want to include it in your final delivery so i'm going to go back to the edit page um, and there another you go. one for you i hope you're all well i'm certainly doing well here now if you drag another clip in like that then you want to save yourself a little bit of time uh, we'll go back to the color page so if you want to copy the nodes that you created from the other clip onto your new one basically all you have to do is go into the window that has your clips in it and then just middle mouse button click on the clip uh, where you've put all your nodes and that basically just copies them over as I said before, make sure your LUT is on the last node. Otherwise, you're sort of defeating the purpose of shooting in log. The idea is that you want the most dynamic range as possible out of your image. And that all happens before the LUT is applied. That's why you've got your adjustments prior to the LUT in this chain of nodes. As usual, I hope you guys got something out of this one. If so, consider leaving me a thumbs up. If not, that's okay too. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of these in the future, please consider subscribing. If you have any ideas for future episodes, please leave those in the comments below. And until next time, keep working to make your chosen idea a reality. Peace.